tal amigos? ¿Cómo están? Estamos llegando al final del 2013. En realidad ha sido un año espectacular, un año en que hemos disfrutado mucho aquí en la compañía de ustedes en Cristina Radio Network. Eh, hemos hecho shows eh, desde todas las partes del mundo. Estamos en Islandia, hemos estado en Alemania, hemos estado en muchos lugares acá en Estados Unidos probando los mejores autos. Hemos estado en los auto shows en eh, Detroit, en Chicago, en Nueva York, en Los Ángeles, en Miami. Hemos ido a Napa Valley, hemos ido a Arizona, hemos manejado en las pistas de Homestead, en la Laguna Seca. En realidad, un año fantástico, en realidad. Y bueno, esta es una edición especial que vamos a tener aquí para eh, lo que queda de este 2013. Y para analizar todo lo que ha sucedido en el año 2013, vamos a tener una edición especial, como decía, con Carl Bauer, uno de los principales responsables de KellyBlueBook.com, que se dedica... Eh, a compilar toda la información, todos lo, los datos que, que tiene esta compañía eh, especializada en la industria automotriz y eh, nos los entrega para no solamente informarnos de lo que está pasando en la industria automotriz, sino ayudar a los consumidores a tomar una decisión más, uh, más acertada, más inteligente, más adecuada a las necesidades de cada uno eh, a la hora de comprar un auto nuevo y también consejos para utilizar eh, mejor el auto que ya se tiene. Así que now we're going to switch back to English. As I was saying in introduction in Spanish, uh, we're going to talk to Carl Bauer from Kelly Blue Book to review everything that uh, went on in uh, 2013, especially with the finalists for the Car and Truck of the Year Award for North America, which is going to be given away at the Detroit Auto Show next month in uh, January. So here we go, Carl Bauer. So here we're the Carl Bauer from uh, KellyBlueBook.com, uh, and uh, not only... He's uh, doing a great job there, but he's also part of the panel that picks a car and the truck of the year uh, uh, for uh, North America. How are you, Carl? Doing great. How about you, Javier? Excellent. Thank you. So, um, in 2013, it's almost gone. We're going to see 2014 in uh, just a few days, and we're going to be at the Detroit Auto Show where the, the, these awards are uh, presented officially so but the process is a very very long process and uh, so you guys have gone through a lot of cars and trucks so can you explain a little bit uh, about the process and also why you think this is important for the consumer who is the people who are buying the cars at the end of the day Absolutely, yeah. The, the process is it's pretty uh, it's pretty well figured out. You know, we've come up with a system that that looks at all the new cars that come out every year. And when we say new cars, we mean substantially changed or redesigned. Uh, obviously, there's hundreds of cars every year on sale, but only a small percentage of them have a substantial update or redesign on any given year. So what we're looking at here are the cars that have, have been totally redesigned or have had major improvements done for the 2014 model year. And from there, we look at the trucks in one category, and that includes uh, SUVs and minivans, basically truck and utility vehicles, and the other ones are strictly cars, so sedans and convertibles and, and, and coupes and station wagons. And we narrow that list down through a process of, of figuring out, first of all, what's eligible because it's had enough of a change for, for 14, yeah. and then which ones we like the best from those. And we do a couple rounds of voting where we go from the long list, which is everything that's eligible, to the short list, which is what gets a certain amount of points uh, from, a, from, the, from the jurors, and then down to um, the finalist list, which we're at now. And, you know, there's 49, I'm sorry, there's 50 jur journalists from, uh, from uh, Canada and the U.S. that vote on these vehicles. And uh, they're, they're across every kind of media, every kind of uh, media outlet. So the good thing is that this isn't like this outlet's vote or that outlet's vote. The reason this award has really got more, I think, sway and is considered a bigger deal for most uh, manufacturers is because it doesn't represent one opinion. It represents pretty much the industry's opinion, according to the 50 journalists who work in these uh, in, in North America. Yeah, and uh, this is important because, I mean, obviously, we, when you have, uh, what is it, 50 people at anything, there's going to be different opinions, right? So, uh, yeah, and, you know, I always like to say that, you know, a survey of one doesn't mean a lot. You, the more people, the more powerful a result is if you have more people weighing in. So when you have 50 people, you get a pretty diverse collection of folks and you get some diverse opinion, but at the end of the day, the car that, that gets the most points and wins over the most number of those 50 journalists 
is going to be a pretty good car or truck, you know, in, in the case of the truck award. Yeah. And uh, again, going back to the question of why is this important to, for, toward the consumer, uh, because I remember like uh, two or three years ago, Saturn, uh, uh, a division of General Motors that no longer exists, won the, won the car of the year war with the Aura, which obviously is like uh, was a shared platform with other models. But then the, the company is gone, the car is gone, so what does it matter for the consumer? I guess we are past those problems now because every car manufacturer has, uh, for now at least, <laughs> uh, uh, a rear all their finances and everybody's doing great. But uh, what do you think is the the, the, the good uh, the, the importance for the consumer to know about these awards? Well, you're right. There was kind of a turbulent time there in the auto industry, and uh, several manufacturers went away that, that maybe otherwise wouldn't have. Um, but the Aura was uh, a really a big step forward for the Saturn division, uh, and I think, unfortunately, it was too little too late, especially given the economic conditions that happened afterwards. But when you talk just generally, I think there are so many vehicles out there that it's easy to get, as a shopper, kind of confused or, or just not know which ones are the new ones for the year and which ones are the ones that are very highly rated across the industry. And that's where the North American Car and Truck of the Year Award is really helpful, I think, is that if you just want to see the vehicles that are new and specifically the new ones that all these people who do this for a living, who review cars for a living, what they all agree are the best versions of the new cars, it's very simple and easy to do that, to just look at the lists. You know, right now we've got the list down to the finalists. We know that the Cor Corvette Stingray, the Cadillac CTS, and the Mazda 3 are the three finalists in the, in the car side, and we know that the Chevrolet Silverado and the Jeep Cherokee and um, the Acura MDX are the trucks that are considered the best trucks now and, and that are in the finalists for winning the award. So only one car and truck will win every year, but right there, if you were to look at the lists uh, that are available now that we've come up with, you, you have a sense of like, okay, well, any of those three vehicles, if I was already considering something like that, I'd know it's doing very well according to the, to the jury. Yeah. Uh, and of those uh, three finalists for the Car of the Year award, obviously, I mean, they are the Corvette and the CTS is the car, are cars that are not for everybody. But, like, uh, the longer list, like the semi-finalists at least, has, like, a, a great collection of, of, of new cars. I mean, the Impala is there, the Chevrolet Spark, the Fiat uh, 500L. Uh, I mean, just like the, the list goes, goes, and on and on, like Kias, Hyundai. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive, the list of new cars that came out this year, right? Yeah, and if you look, like you said, at just the short list, which is up on the website right now, if you go to uh, NorthAmericanCarOfTheYear.org, uh, that's the name of the website, NorthAmericanCarOfTheYear.org, um, you can see right now what those short lists were. And as you say, there's 12 cars and 12 trucks that were on the short list, and there's something for everyone there. You know, Corolla, the Lexus IS, the Kia Cadenza, the Jaguar F-Type, you know, everything from a really expensive kind of sports car to a, an economy car that's, you know, fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 is available. And same thing on the truck side with the Sorento and the Range Rover Sport and the Nissan Rogue and the Subaru Forester. These are all great vehicles that, um, you know, they're brand new and they're considered very uh, highly desirable by the North American Car and Truck of the Year jury. Okay, Carl. So you are a member of the of the jury uh, that that selects the cars, but also like a member of, of the media and an, an expert at KellyBlueBook.com. So in uh, let's see, like two or three minutes, if you can, <laughs> tell me what you see in a car when you first get into a new car. What I what I see in a car? You mean like any new car that I'm testing? Yes, yes. What what like what, what are you looking for? Why are you like uh, like oh, pay, right. paying attention so that you can make that decision for both KellyBlueBook.com and uh, the Car of the Year Award? You know, I'm really looking for a complete package. There's a, there are, there are a lot of cars out there that are very strong in one or two or three areas, but then they have maybe an area that's kind of a weakness and. You can't do that in today's world. Uh, consumers demand and rightfully deserve cars that are very solid top to bottom. They're comfortable, they're quiet, they get good gas mileage, but they're still capable and uh, you know have good acceleration and, and have uh, excellent handling. They look stylish, and they offer all of that at a great value for the dollar. So that's really what I look for when I look at these cars, is something that's competitive on price and very capable in every area that really matters to a modern-day car shopper. 
Yeah, and that's getting even tougher and tougher, right? Because, I mean, again, there's no car. We have mentioned this in previous shows here talking to you. I mean, there's not a bad car anymore in the market. I mean, like, it's obviously a subjective topic, but really, I mean, quality has gone up, like, incredibly in the past, I would say, five to seven years. I mean, there's not one bad car. And you might not like some materials in one panel or something, but in general, cars are very good today. No, it's really variations of good to great is what you've got on cars now. And like you said, the worst cars today would have been considered fabulous cars even by 10 years ago, let alone 30 years ago standards. I always joke and say that the ownership experience with the best car today versus the worst car is this, you know, you hold your fingers close together, it's this different, you know, but in the 1980s and 90s and all, and certainly even earlier, 70s and all, the, the difference in ownership experience was between the best and worst cars on the market was, you know, one worked fine and the other one had you being towed by a flatbed truck on a regular basis, you know, and now it's not like that. Even the worst cars, you're not getting towed and breaking down all the time. So, yeah, all the cars today are very good. Yeah, and it's a matter almost like uh, as, as much as um, car manufacturers go through marketing studies and these, and like uh, all, all these uh, focus groups, it's like if you like it and you can afford it pretty much, right? No, you're right. You're right. You kind of can't go wrong. And now you're down to things like the styling that you prefer, uh, maybe one or two specific features, if there's like some technology features you like, and the price so that you can afford. You're exactly right, Javier. If, if those things resonate with you, it's very unlikely you're going to buy the car and be unhappy with it. Yeah. So, again, uh, the, the prices are going to be awarded at the Detroit Auto Show. And then uh, the process starts immediately after that because, I mean, we are at the end of 2013. Uh, the, the show is in 2014, but we already seen 2015 cars, right? Yeah, no, we're already aware of a bunch of the 15 models that are coming, and so we'll be starting right in again, looking at what's new and, and redesigned for the 15 model year and, and start winnowing the list down again throughout the uh, spring and summer and fall. So uh, we're talking to Carl Bauer from KellyBlueBook.com, and we're doing uh, this special edition show to review everything that went on in 2013 and what's coming up in 2014. And in the se second segment of the show, we're going to analyze the changes at, at, the, at the top of the, some of the companies, General Motors, uh, Ford, possibly. Uh, so we're going to be back in the next segment with Carl Bauer to talk about what's coming up in uh, 2014 in terms of like people who are... Uh, leading the car manufacturing business here in the United States. So we'll be back. Uh, don't go away.